How you doing, everybody? Adidas home team back again. We are checking in on some key members, past and present, of the Arsenal family. So let's get started. Okay, the next guy I absolutely love. Someone that gave his all for our club and continues to be at the centre of the club's vision going forward. The BFG and part of the Adidas London home team, Arsenal Academy manager, Per Mertesacker. Hey, hey, the big man. How are you, big guy? Good, man. Nice one, man. Adidas home team checking. After checking with the big guy. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> Good. Finally, I have the honour, yeah? How are you doing, my friend? Are you on good form? How's everybody? Um, I'm okay, actually. It's a, a total different environment I'm working in right now, but um, try to grow, you know, individually, collectively, as a family, stay healthy. I spoke to Lucas Podolski. He was said to send your... <laughs> yeah, crazy is that guy. He said to send the best to the BFG. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I kind of miss him, you know? Yes. His positivity um, kind of was always outstanding and uh, obviously um, when you speak about someone you miss from yes. that dressing room feeling yes, it's certainly yes. him no matter what day he was always came in with a smile so. yeah, he's a great guy he was a great we had some fun doing it what's a, what's a normal day for you like now in isolation per with so many people you have to check in on and everything yeah so it's really important to to meet people and I cannot do that physically right now and as you know we work no, I, look, I work more from nine to five right now. Yes. And no weekends. I miss the training evenings, the training nines with the youngsters. Yeah. I miss the weekends, no games. So it's more like a Monday to Friday corporate job, nine to five. That is something I wanted never do. You know, I, want, I just absolutely wanted never do. But it just is it is a learning curve. So I'm trying to get in touch with as many people as possible mm. between uh, nine and five, really. What are things that you feel that you've brought to the academy and what and where Arsenal are going futurize yeah. in respect of the role that you're, you're, you're playing? I think important f for myself was I'm football through and through. I love football. I love the game. I love to connect. Mm. And I love to bring values forward that I think complement to Arsenal's. You know, I, yeah. I want to be successful no matter what. I'm eager to learn, I'm willing to get on with my job and inspire youngsters. Yeah. I'm really keen on bringing that to the table. And... The good thing is, youngsters, they still know me. They still know what I stand for. There, yeah. There's a certain trust right now in my person to kind of, um, yeah, make them better players and better people. You know, the thing is, well, I, I, I think that a lot of um, fans don't totally understand exactly what I'm a, an, a, an academy manager goes yeah. through and what he does. You explain to them exactly what your role is in respect of trying to find the next greatness. Obviously, overseeing an academy is... Is, is, is a big company. It's overlooking 180 players and over 100 staff. So wow. you can imagine there are a lot of departments and a lot of people and you're trying to align everyone. We're always speaking about strong young gunners. You know, how, how can we create an environment to, to to that players can really grow in that environment and yeah. make it the best out, out of themselves. And we know not everyone can make it, but yeah. we wanted to get the strongest to the Emirates and the other stronger ones. We wanted to get into other football clubs or any other businesses. So we have a huge responsibility to educate them in the best possible way. You made a point there about, you know, having to try to explain to them what it takes to be an Arsenal footballer. And everybody, of course, that's what everybody wants, but as well to be a rounded individual, a, a decent person, a nice human being. Yeah. That's the that's the impression I got when I came down to, to ALN yeah. and spoke to some of the kids. They were, they were wonderful. Yeah, and, and we are grateful, you know, and, and I think there's something going forward for us that we involve ex-players, all-time greats, you know, who kind of can deliver exactly the Arsenal DNA we want. And not only that as a player, but as a person, you know, yeah. as a personality, to be that decent human being, you know, that gets the best out of himself yeah. is absolutely crucial. So that starts really earlier for me. That starts by keeping up with the schoolwork, you know, yeah. that's crucial. Schoolwork... Football, you know, it goes hand in hand, yeah. really, for me. But we're trying to put the emphasis on now. Oh, you have not, you have not end your learning. You know, yeah. you're a lifelong learner. You need to push on from yeah. here. You know, you need to do everything in the right way. That's your training. That's being on time. Yeah. That's doing your education, mm -hmm. uh, doing the analysis work, S and C work, um, the psychological work. 
there's a lot of stuff going on. So it's a proper full-time job. And if mm. you don't make the right choices there, you're never going to make it. Do you kind of give them these words of wisdom? You're a World Cup winner for crying out loud. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. if you try to explain to them that yeah. the common denominator in anybody who's successful is, firstly, is the hard work. We are role models in every facet of it. We are role models. You are, I am. We are really keen on giving Mikel Arteta a lot of headaches, you know? That yes. he, he, he must think in what's going on in the academy. Every year there's there's a potential two, three yeah. players who can, who can step onto their court. Um, but I know his standards, you know? I know what he stands for. Yes. So I need to I need to prepare the players, really. When they step into the first-team environment, they are ready and prepared. And the thing is, with, with someone like Mikel, who is he's, he's so forward-thinking in what he wants to do, you could see his plan, you could see his vision. What was that first yeah. conversation like for, for you with him, obviously being an ex-teammate with him? I mean, I was really, really excited of him coming to the club. I mean, um, he was captain. I was vice-captain that time, you know? So I, yeah. I, I kind of learned standing next to him in, in a dressing room and meetings with the players where he demanded from me, I, I need, you, need to st- you need to stand next to me, you know, when, when we speak to the players. Right. So you kind of get that feeling of, yeah, he, he holds you accountable. But yes. He, he trusts me in a way that will be really, really special. And now we're getting in a rhythm and it just feels back again in the days when we played and we had to trust for each other. So yeah. I'm literally really excited for us moving forward as we have two key roles um, with Edu as well. Yes. Um, so I would say that we have a good chance and the possibility to really grow from me as a club. And and, I, and you can almost see even in the first team, you know, small steps, yes. but the right steps are, 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 being, are being taken right now. Everybody, I feel, realises we're now moving in, in a really positive direction. You know, I was going to say to you, Per, what people don't understand is, is that that wonderful feeling you get when you know that you're going in in the morning to tell somebody that you know something, we see something in you, we're going to sign you. But people don't realise the other side of that. Try to explain to people how hard yeah. that is. For some, they get a scholarship, but some don't. So you need to have that conversation with them where you say, listen um, to the player and the parents that this is the end of your journey at Arsenal. Your journey is over, but we're trying to support you. Maybe you get another another club. And here are examples of other players who who were released as well, but made it to the to the to the big stage of of professional football. So it's ne- it's never going to going to be easy. And my first experience is, is devastating for yourself. But yeah. you're trying to turn it into the to a positive one, as as I had uh, similar experiences where yeah. I got written off a lot of times. You know as as being not the, the most talented footballer when I was 15 or 16. So um, that will never be easy. Yeah. And when you have empathy, um, you don't want that to be easy yes. because you just feel with, with the other side, with the other person. But I'm trying to be honest, open and be authentic in those meetings. You know, I want people to understand as well, you know, you look at people like Joe Willock, Eddie Nketiah, yeah. Reese, uh, Reese Nelson Saka. This is a great, um, a great advertisement for... Um, the academy and what the academy is doing. I can't even imagine how proud everybody must be of those four yeah. guys and how easy it must be for you guys to say, hang on a minute, look at this wall. These players are now in the first team. How, yeah. Does that make it even easier for you to do the, the kind of like um, the motivational speaking kind of vibe? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think we have fantastic examples in the first team yeah. and somewhere else where we can say, listen, these boys have made it they've made it for a reason that's not only us that's them that's 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 what we did together absolutely you know something just before we go how, how are you feeling yourself you're keeping fit yourself how's everything going? Nah. you look <laughs> you look pretty good you look pretty good you still look as big as i've ever seen you <laughs> i'm filling up my camera yeah. but like the fact is, yeah when, you look pretty when we fit see here, the, when, we, when we see each other next you you will have your judgment judgment then um, <laughs> I, I jumped on in a few yoga session with the first team so yes. I, I used to love yoga with the first team so now it's all um on 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 zoom and yeah. we're doing uh things still together so it's not really keeping fit but um i don't know i don't know how to express it you you will judge it when we see me no, uh, next time Listen, man, thank you so much. Listening to you speak so passionate about the club, about the future, with everything that's going on. I'm so, you know what I mean? I'm sure that people will be pleased to see that you're at the elm of our academy. All I want to say is just stay safe. Good luck to you and your family. And I'll see you soon. Huh? See, I'm, I'm coming down as soon as we're finished with all this, as soon as it's safe to do so. Come to see you at LN. Right, yeah, I want to say we appreciate you, you know, and your support for Arsenal. The academy has been magnificent. So um, whenever you want. 
Thank you so Speak much, Per. You're the best, man. I love you, man. Bye bye. You too. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Speak soon. Just saying his name brings a smile to my face. A man I was lucky enough to play alongside, repping the Adidas home team in France, Mr. Invincible, the captain of the Invincibles himself, Mr. Patrick Vieira. Let me check in on Pat. <laughs> Look at you. I'm glad you're laughing. <laughs> Patrick, como ça va, mon ami? What's going on? What's going on, righty? I'm just checking in on Adidas home team, man. See how you're doing. You look good, man. Look at you. All relaxed and chilling, man. You look, you're smiling, everything. A happy man, you know? Even in this time? Yeah, I think you just have to look at the good side of uh, this uh, really terrible period. This spending time with the family. Yes, my friend. How is the family? Everybody good? Family is doing really well. Did I remember me? They don't really remember me. That did you I remember me? Be really happy knowing that I'm talking to you. <laughs> How's it with the, for the team and stuff now? Because you guys are six. Now, obviously, the league is stopped. Yeah, it's it's really difficult. The end of the season is uh, it's over now, so we are just waiting on to see what will happen next. And uh, to be honest, I think that was the um, the right decision. Yeah. And uh, and now we're just waiting. The next couple of days, we should have uh, more details about when we can start the next season yeah you know i was gonna say as well with the with the coaching because obviously you've done the the city the, the young guys you've done the mls and now you're back in, in france with nice and that was that your plan patrick to to do it in different places i wanted to do it in a long period so i wanted to give myself myself the best um, education i would yeah. say so i did my badges with the uh, the the welsh fa yes. and it was uh, it was fantastic and then um, at Manchester City, I was at the right place at the right time because they um, allowed me to take the uh, the, uh, the under twenty one. Yeah. And then I, I moved to New York because that was uh, the next step for me to to learn more about the, the coaching because I wanted to be sure if uh, that was something that I really wanted to do. So moving to New York was a massive step for me. And uh, two and a half years in New York, I was uh, I was ready to come back to Europe and take the next challenge. Are you going to come to the Premier League at some stage? Do you think, Patrick, is that something you'd like to do at some stage? Would Listen, love I, to I, come really, back. I really don't know what the future will be. Um, but, you know, I doing this job, it was like uh, being a player. I want to, to play at a higher level. I wanted to, to play for the national team. I wanted to, to go to the World Cup. I wanted to play with the best player around. And, uh, and there is no doubt that as a coach, I have the same kind of, uh, of ambition. I will want to manage a team that will have a chance to win the Champions League, to yeah. play the Champions League competition. Yeah. Uh, but at the moment, uh, honestly, right here at, uh, at Nice, I'm in a, in a perfect place. Mm -hmm. Perfect place because I can fool my ambitions. Uh, the club is really ambitious and the club give me the tools to to grow as a manager, yeah. but to be um, to be a part of the winning winning team yes. and to play good competition as well. And the team is is growing up really fast, really quick, and uh, and hopefully I can uh, get my ambitions with uh, with Ozesenis. How would you describe the way you play? Because when we, when you came to our team, our team played a, a beautiful way. Is that how you play? This is how I really enjoy the game and being at Arsenal and play at Juventus and play at Inter with some fantastic players around me. It's always about having the possession and the technical ability of the players make you enjoy the game. And this is how I want to, to be on the bench and look at my team play. And obviously you need those type of players to express those, uh, those, uh, those talent and those quality. And we are... We are building up this team and uh, it's going to take time, but yeah. hopefully we will be one of the biggest team in, in France and we can play European football in the next couple of years. Uh, but yes, we want to play, uh, play a, a nice way uh, with uh, technical players and, uh, and we want to be successful by playing the right way. You know, when you play, because you was always so cool and calm at half time, what, what's it like when you come in at half time and... It's not what you want. Because Arsene Wenger never said anything angry at all. You know what I mean? What, what, and you, I never ever saw you angry with anybody shouting and screaming. What are you like when you're half time if they're not playing right? You know, I'm quite... Um, it's all depending the effort that the players are giving on the field. And um, Do you shout, Patrick? Honest, Do you shout? I'm shout yes, I'm, I'm shouting when 
when we are done doing something that we prepare all yeah. the week. I'm shouting when we are not thinking about the team uh, first. Yeah. I'm shouting when players think that he can make a difference by himself. And I'm shouting when when we are not working together. And if uh, the plan that we prepare all week, that we are not respecting what we put in place, that really frustrates me. That really upset me. But overall, my communication with the players, majority of the time, really calm. I'm like the the dialogue with the players. Yes. I like to interact with the players. I like to to convince them, and um, I like to convince them with um, with communication more than uh, shouting. You understand what yes, I mean? Yes, so, But what really uh, really saved me is that I don't have players with your character. So that <laughs> makes it really easy for me. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean with my character? <laughs> How would you deal with my kind of character? What I will do with you? Yeah. I will do right. You go in the field and do what you want. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure you will come in and we've scoring a couple of goals. <laughs> you know, you say that. I remember when you first came, I remember... 96 it was. 96. Yeah. You came at halftime with the, um, when we, we beat Sheffield and I scored a hat-trick, but yeah. only people was talking about Patrick Vieira because they couldn't believe what they were seeing. Could you remember that day? You was feeling really bad, huh? <laughs> no, I wasn't. You said, who's, who's no. this French players coming No, over Patrick, here? because when you came, Patrick, we couldn't believe it because we thought, oh, he's going to be a centre-half at some stage because he's tall, you know, he's good, he's good on the ball and this and that. But then when he was in the midfield, people saying, what's he like? I said, he's, he's different to anything I'd ever seen. People always say that um, I will finish my career as a central half. But yeah. for me, it wasn't uh, a question of playing as a central back because I love too much this uh, midfielder position because this is where I feel like I can go forward, I can go backwards, I can uh, run up and down. Um, I needed to, to expand my, my energy. And uh, the midfield the position was a, was a place that I really enjoyed playing. And you see with, with Arsenal now, you see like Mikel's come in, you see a little bit of change. Have you have you been watching some of the stuff Do you see? Yes, of course I've been, you know, when, what they said is... Uh, when you're a gunner, always a gunner. Exactly. You know? So I, I keep I watching them all the time. I watch their games. And what is really interesting with uh, with Arteta is that he bring um, the energy exactly. back. Exactly. And, uh, and it looks like they are playing for the club, but for the manager as well. And I think that is uh, really important. Nice one, Patrick. You know what I'm going to do? I, I do want to come and I want to come and see you, but I don't want to come and see you. You don't want you don't look after me. You have to come don't, and look after don't me. Don't worry. Your room is ready at home. You come in whenever you want, my friend. You're I really welcome. I really appreciate it, man. Listen, Patrick, take it easy. Say out to show for me because I will. And, I will. And, nice and to I love see you. you. Look at you. Look great. Look at you. Thank you. Thank you. The same to you, my friend. Oh, God bless you, man. Bye bye. Someone who's playing an important role in keeping the home team spirit alive, a lifelong gooner, and a key member of the Goals for Girls team. Let's check in on Amy, see how she's doing. Hi, Amy. Hi. How, how are you, you doing? I'm not too bad, thank you. Thank you for giving me a call. It's perked me right up. <laughs> I can see you under bruised banana under that top as well. Oh, yeah. Love always, it. Always. You're in East London, right? You come from East London? Yeah, yeah. I'm and, from Bow. I'm from Tower Hamlet. So, uh, uh, where's the Arsenal connection? Who, who made you to support Arsenal? My dad's from Islington. Right. Um, so, I grew up wanting to support the same team as my dad. Um, and it was really special to me because my dad wasn't always there. Right. So we always had this connection through Arsenal. Yeah. Um, and I mean, growing up in the 90s, like, we had some of the best players of all time, in my opinion. Obviously yourself. <laughs> 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 but um, no, I mean, my favourite player in that era was Dennis Burkamp. Yeah, mine too. Hands down. Yeah. Hands down. One of the best players ever. Ever. Okay. So what do you do, Amy? What do you do, Amy? So I work for a non-profit called Goals for Girls. Yeah. So uh, we work with girls and young women aged between 11 and 16. So a lot of the young people we work with are vulnerable for a number of reasons. So we get the girls in to train. They play football, even if they've never played before. Yeah. It's all about kind of changing attitudes towards behaviour and learning through football. So football is the educational tool in which mm. we do that. And then from that, we just try and raise the girls' aspirations. For a lot of our young women, there's a, a big sort of lack of confidence. Right. 
What? They don't really see themselves. What do you think that is from? Where, where do you think that was? I think a lot of it is representation. Right. I mean, there's that old sort of phrase, if you can't see it, you can't be it. Right. You don't really see as many female pundits, right. as many female managers. So I think that's the thing that sort of lets them down a little bit. Don't get me wrong, it's getting a lot better. Yeah. But I think until they can see it a lot more they're always going to have that little bit of hesitation. Yeah, I'll tell you what as well, Amy, you mentioned that because I, I've done some stuff the other day with um, with Chloe Kelly and she scored an amazing goal and I I, I commented on how great this goal was and the, the abuse that came, the volume of yeah. abuse that came, like talking about the league, it, it can make people t kind of turn away from it. How do you make girls understand that they've got to get through that and break through the fact that people with their opinions, it might be an abusive opinion, you try to ignore that, but to continuously keep going and striving forward, do what you're doing. It's hard because it's all about building resilience, isn't it? Mm. Um, and to try and sort of instill that in a young person, there are so many challenges to yeah. it. Being an all-female-led organisation, yeah. that helps the girls kind of build that resilience. They can see people who have been through very similar kind of pathways to them, yeah. obstacles that we've overcome, that they're overcoming, and it kind of gives them somebody to relate to. What do you do with them at the minute, Aim? Because you don't see them, so it must be so much more difficult to do. It's what really you... hard, yeah. So, I mean, every Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, they've still got their mentoring sessions, their one-on-ones with their mentors, and that's just done by a video chat. And we've had a lot of parents want to talk to us as well because they're finding it quite difficult to make sure that their child's sort of stimulated and they're motivated and they're happy. Right. So you know what we're going to do? I'm going to I'm going to get Adidas to host the box. We'll have a game a game down at the Ars at the Emirates, and we'll I'll oh, see all the brilliant. girls. I'll get my goals for girls tracksuit top like you've got, um, and then we can we can have a really we can have a really good time. You could feel me in even more. You know what I mean? You're doing I great stuff. You're doing love great that. stuff, Amy. You, you, thank you, Ian. You know I mean? Thank I really, you so much. I, I appreciate you. Everybody appreciates you. But I, hopefully I'll see you soon, huh? Yes. Please keep safe. I will do. And you. You keep safe. Lots of love to your girls and your family. Thanks so much. You'll, you'll meet them soon. You'll meet them soon. Thanks a lot, Amy. I'll see you soon. See ya. Bye. You're the best. You're the best. You're the best. <laughs> <laughs> so another Home Team episode done. Thank you very much for watching. Keep safe and take care of yourselves and your loved ones. Take it easy. Bye.